Okay. So I want to get a copy of this start to end because I've never done it before and I don't have kind of backup if there's people who are missing class. So here is start to end phone holder with custom features, variables, configurations, assemblies and drawings. All right, let's get started. You're gonna start with a blank document. Start from scratch, go ahead and start your own. Give it a nice meaningful name. The first thing we want to do is create some variables that represent the size of the phone. We're going to make four variables here. The first one we can call the width. And that's going to be a length variable. It's going to have units of inches. So I'm going to call the width of my phone um, three inches. It's actually a little bigger than that. I'm going to start with three. And then we can go back and edit it later. Uh, the height of my phone. And I'm going to give that six. Again, I think it's a little bigger, but I can change that later. If the value of using variables is that these are designed to be modified easily, you'll see they're also showing up here in the feature tree. I'm using the full words. If you want to just use W, H, L, that's fine. Okay. Um, set the depth of my phone here to be half an inch. Again, I think it's less than that, but these are just starting descriptions. Okay. The fourth variable is the thickness. So the thickness is the thickness of the of the material that we're going to be working from, and that is one eighth of an inch. You can type in one divided by eight or 0.125. All right, those are all the variables we're going to be working with. Anytime I want to change them, I can do so from this variable table or in the feature tree I can double click and change it here. I can take these, I do like them, but I've got this nice variable table. So I'm actually gonna select all of those by holding select or shift and add those to a folder that I will call variables. And they're still here in my feature tree, but now they take up a little less space. We'll start by sketching the phone on the right plane. And this is a placeholder. We are gonna physically create a phone. It does not need to be perfect. I'll start in the, the origin with just a corner rectangle. Unfortunately, I can't just double click in here and type in, um, if I hit the, the hashtag or pound sign, it does this kind of rotation. So I can't use the auto dimensions. I need to create my own. So the overall thickness here, this is gonna be the depth of my phone. And all I have to do is start typing in the variable name and select it and hit enter. And then I'll place another dimension here for the height. Again, start typing in the name of the variable and hit enter. If I change the variables, the sketch will update. This one, I can jump right into the extrude. This is gonna be a symmetric extrude and the depth is going to be the width of the phone. Now, this is an important part of the design, but we're not actually gonna laser cut this particular part. It's a placeholder, which is a really important aspect of the concept of design and working from CAD is having helper geometry that we can base other parts off of. This one is the phone. And to kind of give it this idea of the ghost part, I can right click on that, edit appearance. Okay. I'm gonna give it kind of a grayish color, but I'll set a transparency so I can see through it. It's gonna give me the illusion of the phone being in the holder, but I'm not actually, this doesn't have to look just like a phone, it's just a placeholder. So now we're gonna take this and tilt it back. A phone holder that's vertical isn't gonna hold very well. And so I wanna tip that back some. And to do that, we'll use the transform tool. 
The transform tool is very powerful. The entity to be transformed is the phone itself. And the different options of the transform tool, we can draw a line and transform it by selecting that line. We could select a plane and give a distance away. I do like this translate by XYZ. I'll give you a quick demo on that. That allows us to slide apart in a couple of different directions, right? So that is an XYZ translation. Um, we'll talk about make connectors later. And rotate allows us to tilt this around an axis. So selecting the axis, I'm gonna select the back edge of my phone. And you can sort of manually see about where you want it and pick an angle. Okay. I don't want to copy, although that is another option in the transform that's really helpful. Okay, so now we're going to create a sketch that's going to represent the back part and the ledge part. Create the sketch on the right plane. And I do want to use this geometry. So I will select construction, project, and pull up those two back surfaces of the phone that the phone holder is going to make contact with. We're going to sketch the back part first. And I like to use the aligned rectangle option here. So I can select the back surface here. I don't want to go all the way to the top. I'm going to come out perpendicular. Oh, I'm in construction mode right now. Q is a shortcut that allows me to toggle that construction mode off. All right, I want to come perpendicular and then all the way down here, past the bottom. I'm going to fully dimension this. Again, I can't use my variables um, just typing in. So I need to create the dimension. And then I'm going to type the thickness of the material, so eighth inch. And then the two other dimensions that are going to define this is the distance from the top of the phone. Um, and the distance beyond the bottom of the phone. And that's all the geometry we need for the back edge. This is gonna keep the phone holder relative to the phone, even if we change the size. If it gets taller, then the ledge is gonna get taller. Now we're gonna add a second aligned rectangle. And here I wanna go, this one's a little trickier for me to kind of start. So I'll just come on the back face here along the back face and then come out. Again, I'm gonna use the dimension tool to give the thickness. I'm gonna dimension how far I want it to stick out past the end of my phone. But it's still not done. The last thing I can do here to make this Fully defined is to set this line and this line coincident. So a couple of important things here. We wanna make sure that this back part and the ledge intersect. So there should be one, two, three, four separate closed loops happening in this sketch. I'm not gonna select the sketch here. I'm not gonna use the shortcut into the extrude because I only want pieces of this sketch. I do use this sketch quite a bit. So I'll rename this to be called back and ledge because I use this sketch quite a bit. All right, time to extrude. Extrude this two, three rectangles. All three of those rectangles are gonna be extruded. This is a symmetric extrude. The width or depth of the extrude is going to be, I'm using a parenthesis, um, width of the 
phone plus two times the thickness of the, of the material. So essentially we're gonna have sides on the edge and the back and the sides have to interfere for our laser cutting to work. So I'm gonna use the parentheses to get the full width of the phone plus two times the thickness. And that is a symmetric extrude. Okay. So we can use um, equations here in our depth. See how it sticks out a little bit past the edge? It's also important to note here that when I say width, really in that variable, I need to be including any extra space that I want. So if my phone is actually 3.2 inches and I wanna have a little bit of room for it to move side to side, I might wanna set the width to be 3.4. So that width of the phone is gonna to have to be your phone plus any space that you want inside there. The other thing I did mistakenly is here this shows up as it's still a part of the phone. I go back, I wanna change that to be a new part, separate part. So we'll rename that to be the back. And we'll give it a color that looks, what did appearance? Um, vaguely wood-like. Appearances in Onshape typically don't have textures, um, but we can assign different colors. All right, we're gonna jump into creating the side plate. So the sketch for the side plate is here on this surface. So I'm selecting the far edge of my back. When I create this part, it's gonna extrude in towards the back so that there's interference there. I'm gonna hit P to turn off those planes. Clean up my screen a little. All right. When I sketch how big I want the back plate to be, I'm gonna use just a regular corner rectangle. Oops, let me undo that and try again. Now, how big of a side plate do I want this to be? Well, I wanna think of that idea of design and motion. Um, this is not static. I'm not saying it's gonna be six inches and that's the overall height forever and ever. Um, I want it to be big enough that the back piece is going to fit inside there and the ledge that the holes that are needed to be cut are going to fit. Other than that, I want it to kind of grow and change with the size of the phone and the holder and the layout. So I'm going to dimension this um, based off of this back part here. So if I find the highest point, I can actually in this case, I can hide the phone. It's really more the holder that I'm concerned about than the phone itself. So I can create a dimension from that point, the top point to the top of the base. I wanna make sure there's at least a quarter inch of space outside of that cut. Okay, so I took the top point measured to the top line. I'm gonna hit escape to get out of my dimension tool here and just sort of manually pull these out. All right, so I'm gonna do that a few more times. The farthest right point to the farthest right line, right? At least a quarter inch material there. The lowest bottom point to the lowest bottom line, I want at least a quarter inch of material there. All right, now this last piece. I want it the line to the farthest, farthest left point to the farthest left line. Well, all I see here is the back. I don't see the ledge, but the ledge is going to stick out further. I need to pull some information from this part, the back and ledge. So I'm going to click the eyeball here to show that sketch. And I'm going to use the farthest left point to the farthest left line and make that dimension quarter inch. Okay. If you are really interested in, you could set a variable for offset and use that variable in all of these places. But honestly, a designer could choose. I want a little more material below and a little less above. So I'm gonna leave them as designer's choice. Um, this is definitely an opportunity to do some personalization. Maybe cut off this corner, et cetera. 
I'm, yeah, this is fine to jump right into the extrude. No reason not to. We are going to use that entire sketch. So first things first, this is a brand new part. It's a separate part from the back. So we're we'll switch from add to new. We do want it to overlap. So I'm going to click opposite direction to bring it in towards the back plate. And the depth is the thickness. Again, you can start with the pound sign or you can just start typing in the variable name. Enter. And there we go. So you can kind of see as I move around, sometimes this little gap here is blue, sometimes it's brown. And that's because both parts are occupying the same space. That's really important for our design. I want to rename this. I'm going to call this one um, right side. And I'm going to mirror this part over the right plane. So here's my mirror tool. This is a part mirror. I know before I've said I don't usually use part mirror, but we are in this case. It was already selected, so that's the entity to mirror. It is going to be a new part. And the mirror plane is the right plane. If your right plane is not showing, you can select it from the feature list. Um, it says merge with back. I don't want that. I want to go new, no merging, totally separate part. So this is the left side. All right. The next step. And if you're following along with the slides, this one's an important one. Grab the right slide here. All right. This slide has the link to where we need to get our custom feature. Okay, so this is in my courses. And inside the laser cutting intro information, this link is really important for us to set up our custom feature. So the power of Onshape is that it is open source and anyone can contribute to public features that other people can use. This laser joint feature is not built into native Onshape, but Arul Suresh from Stanford University developed it and made it available to other Onshape users. So if you click on this link, it'll open the laser joint feature script. The first page is a PDF that shows how to use it. And there's a lot of information here for you to really look into different options. You'll also notice at the bottom, there are, um, this is the actual laser chip, or laser, this is the actual feature script. And this is how this particular tool was created. All we need to do is add it to our custom feature toolbar. So click on this plus sign custom features up at the top. Okay? And then you're going to find this laser joint. It should be white for you. It should look like this. And you are going to click it until it's blue. And you get the pop up that says it's been added to your toolbar. So now if I go back to my phone holder, I have custom features on the far right side. And you'll notice I have quite a few custom features. Some of them I use for class, some of them I use for my own personal CAD development. So the laser joint should be one of these custom features listed in your dropdown. If you're having a hard time finding it, try the search tools and type in laser joint. If it doesn't show up, then you probably didn't add it correctly. We're going to just start with the simplest laser joint. We'll use the automatic option, select two different parts, right? and you can see how it's created those pins. You can try playing around with different number of pins and see what you like. You'll notice a lot of options here. Allowance would allow you to make uh, gaps between parts. Or if you add a negative allowance, that would allow for some interference if you needed a tighter fit. If this is not working, you'll want to double check 
and make sure that your side piece and your back piece interfere. That interference area is where the laser joint is created. We can do it again on the other side. Select the two parts, I'm gonna switch to automatic. Make sure they have some sharing geometry and indicate the number of pins. Okay. If you wanna verify things have worked out right, we can take that left side and hide it and you can see what was done to the back part. Next, we're gonna add this ledge piece. So we're going to um, actually find this easier with the phone hidden and the backside hidden. You do need to make sure the back and ledge sketch is available. We'll create an extrude from the two different rectangles representing the ledge. And again, because we wanna do that laser joint, we need some interference between the ledge and the back part. The depth is gonna be a two-sided depth. I really like this opportunity. So we're gonna say up to face and we're gonna extrude it to the far right part. It's a new part, it's not added. Okay, so now we should start to see some overlap, but we're gonna offset it a little bit. So 0.2, and as I rotate, I can see it's offset, but it's on the wrong side of that face. So I'll flip that, and now I've got it sticking through, but sticking out a little bit. Okay. What a great opportunity here, up to face with an offset. Okay. So as, if I change from portrait mode to landscape mode, these sides are gonna push out, that ledge is gonna stay out the full width, every time. And that also allows us to kind of capture the idea of the variables in here without having to do the equations here. Second end position, same thing, up to face, select the outside face, give it a little offset on the other side, and then use whatever value you want. So, Really powerful tool, just using your normal extrude option here. Make sure it's a new part, so it's not adding to the existing parts. And I'll rename this one to be the ledge. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and turn the back on. Make sure there's some overlap there. And add a laser joint between those two parts. I like to use the automatic option. Okay. You can have more pins or fewer pins than before. So the one thing we still have is if I hide my ledge, you can see that there's no um, opening for that offset. And the ledge is, interfering with the two side plates. Um, I'm actually done with my back and ledge so I can hide that. This is not gonna be a laser cut. This is going to use the option for Boolean. Boolean is going to allow us to either add two parts together, subtract material from one based on another, or just keep the area that's intersected by two different parts. So we are going to subtract. The target is the parts that we're going to subtract from. So we're gonna subtract from both the right and the left side. The tool is the geometry that's gonna drive the cut. And I wanna keep the tool. If I don't select keep tool, that's gonna to disappear when we're done. I do wanna keep the tool. I want a little bit of an offset here. I don't want this to be super tight. So I'm gonna offset, this looks like it's going the wrong direction. I wanna flip outside. Oh, faces to offset, we're gonna offset all. Okay. So a quarter inch is way too big. Um, we're gonna offset maybe 0 0.05, right? We're gonna give, 
a little bit of a gap, little space there around the ledge. So it slides right through without any resistance. Okay. Maybe a little bit less, 0.02. Again, designer's choice. Um, feel free to uh, customize this to what you are hoping to achieve. All right, so we have built our phone holder. <laughs>